Hey Saints, um, this isn't going to take very long. I had a few people, emails, Facebook messages, Twitter messages, Google emails, personal, and YouTube. I had a few people ask me what were my thoughts on the Pope's visit. Now, I had people tell me, why don't you go to the visit and get words of wisdom? Well, people are receiving this human being, because that's what he is. He's not a man, he's not God, he's not Jesus Christ. He's certainly not a representative of God. I mean, this guy is the devil incarnate. And he's got a spirit of divination, an antichrist spirit. He's got a spirit of deception that is being controlled by a Jezebel spirit. I mean, you notice how 1.2 billion Catholics flock to him. They're deceived. And how many more continue to be deceived. This is a pope that supports homosexuality, abortion. He believes that we should have a one world religion. He had an interfaith service. 9-11 burial grounds because there are some righteous souls that died in that government that's right government manufactured accident it wasn't the Muslims it was the government that planned that whole thing the US government and I'm not defending the Muslims I'm just telling you the truth um He believes in idolatry. I mean, this is a man that lives in a Vatican. He lives in luxury while there are Catholics out there that are living in poverty. So, Mr. Pope, if you're such a holier-than-thou man, if you're such a holy man, okay, why don't you redistribute your wealth to the poor? Because, ladies and gentlemen, he talks about redistributing the wealth to the poor. Well, why don't we start with your wealth, wealth Mr. Vatican? Why don't you tell them how much gold you're sitting on and how much billions of dollars you have? Why don't you redistribute your wealth to the poor instead of living in luxury? This Pope is not a man of God. He's a man of the devil because God does not support idolatry, homosexuality. He does not support abortion. He doesn't support same-sex marriage like this Pope does. Okay? God doesn't support that. This man is not a man of God. And he thinks he's going to heaven but I have some news for you, Mr. Pope. You're going straight to hell to burn where you belong. And some people might have a problem with me saying this. I don't care. That's your issue. You don't like it? Too bad. I'm sick and tired of people worshiping this Pope. And then they have the, like, like if he's God. Then they have the nerve to call him a Prince of Peace. There's only one Prince of Peace, and that's Jesus Christ. There's only one that can forgive sins, not a priest. Not this Pope. Only Jesus Christ can forgive sins. There's only one that is, an, it, it, that is a mediator between the Father and humanity. That's Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father. Not this Pope. This Pope is the biggest lying scumbag I've ever seen. In his speech to the UN, he was telling the UN how the wealth should be redistributed, right? Well, I didn't see him mentioning anything about his wealth. Do you know that this Pope lives in luxury? Do you notice that his robes are, uh, yes, they're dirty as heck. They're dirty, full of sin, but they have gold all over them. Did you notice that he lives in a mansion, like a palace? Men of God and women of God are not supposed to embrace the wisdom of this life. You're not supposed to embrace the wealth of this life. You're supposed to embrace, embrace the wealth and wisdom of heaven, of Jesus Christ, who is the real Prince of Peace, who is the only living God on this planet, in existence, the true living God, that can forgive sins. So, Mr. Pope, if you're talking about redistributing wealth, why don't you redistribute yours? I bet you're going to say no. You don't want to do that. You don't want to redistribute wealth, your wealth. You want to you wanna live in luxury. Well, it's okay that Catholics are starving. 
Did you know that more than half of the Catholics struggle in poverty? Did you know that more than half of them go hungry at night while you live up in your mansion eating whatever you want, living in luxury, you have money, you have wealth, while these people struggle? But if, but if so, if you want to sit here and say redistribute the wealth, let's start with yours. I bet you anything you're going to say, no, leave my wealth alone. That's what you're going to say. You're not a man of God, sir. No way, no how. So, to those of you that ask me if I support this Pope, no, I don't. No way. How can I support a Pope that, that stands, uh, that opposes everything Jesus Christ stands for? How can I support a Pope that, um, says it's dangerous to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the devil in that Pope, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit in him. He has demons in him. He is not holy. The Bible says in Matthew 24, Jesus Christ said his own words to be careful that false price, I'm sorry, Christ and false prophets will arise, even if possible, to deceive the very elect of God. That man is a false Christ. That Pope is a false Christ. He's an antichrist spirit. He looks holy to you and innocent, but inside he's full of dead man's bones. Inside he's wicked. He has a, a heart full of coal. Jesus Christ told me that he knows, he knows that Bible prophecy is happening. He knows that the rapture is going to happen. He knows that Jesus Christ is coming and he made a sinister plot to hide that from the public. He made a sinister pro not, plot not only with Obama, but he made a sinister plot with other world leaders, not to let the public know of the greatest human catastrophe that is going to befall mankind. He made it. He made it. He made a plot to not tell you guys that the rapture is real, that it's going to happen, because that's going to bring worldwide chaos. He also made a plot to not tell you guys, to hide Bible prophecy from your eyes, to not tell you guys that they know Jesus Christ is real, that Jesus Christ is coming. They know the Antichrist is real. They know that the rapture is real and that Bible prophecy is legitimate, it's real. That is, that the Christian faith is true. That Jesus Christ is the truth, the light, and the way. Not that false pedophile Muhammad or not the devil Allah. Or not those other false gods, Krishna and the Buddha and those other false faiths are not true. They're not of God. They know that. What they're worshipping, those other false gods, those are demons. If you look under the Vatican, they have statues of all of these false gods. Okay, if they're supposed to be of Jesus Christ, why do they worship idols? So your Pope is plotting behind your back. Your Pope doesn't care about you. This is to you Catholics. Your Pope doesn't care about you. Your Pope does not have the authority to forgive sins. Only Jesus Christ does. The Pope is not the mediator between the Father and humanity. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father. You people, a lot of you are insane. And I mean that in a loving manner that you could sit there and listen to garbage like this. I had somebody ask me, why don't you uh, get wisdom from your Pope? He's not my Pope. I'm not Catholic. I'm not Catholic. That scumbag is not my Pope. And I, I look, I'm going to say it like it is. I'm not cursing or nothing like that, but I'm full of righteous anger. Because... That Pope is claiming that God supports homosexuality. I don't know what God he worships. No, let me rephrase that. He says God supports what he believes. In idolatry, homosexuality, abortion. Which God, Mr. Pope? It certainly ain't Jesus Christ. You worship Lucifer. That's the God that supports what you believe in. Jesus Christ is Lord and he's coming back. And you know that the Bible prophecies are real, that Jesus Christ is the true faith, the light, the way, the narrow gate to the Father, and nobody can get to the Father only through Jesus Christ. And he that has the truth of the Father in them, the Father dwells in them. Everybody rejected the one that sent, the, the one that the Father sent, which was, which was Jesus Christ. Most of them rejected him. 
because he had the truth and light in him. Jesus Christ had no fault, no sin, never lied. So if I, if you're asking Mr. Pope, if I need to trust you or Jesus, well, Jesus Christ never lied to me before. I trust him with my life. What have you got to show for it? You're a liar. You're evil to the core. I don't care if these people look at you. They see an innocent old man. I see, I see a sinister old man. Very evil. Very dishonest. A deceptive antichrist spirit. Spirit of divination. That is controlled by a very powerful Jezebel spirit. Witchcraft spirit. Don't get me wrong. Jesus Christ is the most powerful. But this Pope here is controlled by a very influential Jezebel demon witchcraft spirit working with other subordinate demons. You think you're going to heaven, Pope, but you're not. You allow, you believe abortion is acceptable. You believe murder is acceptable. You live in wealth while there are those that live in poverty. You talk about redistributing the wealth, but you don't want your wealth redistributed. How can you proclaim to be a man of God when you plot behind the public? You plot with the elite. You know the rapture is going to happen. You know Jesus Christ is God. You know he's real and that he's coming. You know that the great catastrophe is going to befall mankind. You're trying to hide that from the public eye. But there are a few of those that are awake to your deception, that are awake. I worship Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is Lord. You, sir, are not a prince of peace. You are a prince of feces. And I'm going to say it like it is. And those that get offended, oh well, too bad you can stop the video. Jesus Christ is Lord, and I'm so sick and tired of people being deceived. That's why I don't hardly come on YouTube no more. I don't come on YouTube because I have a load of deliverance cases, for one. I have lots of souls to minister to, counseling to do. And another reason behind that is because of the fact that, that YouTube is full of false prophets like this Pope. You have to be careful, ladies and gentlemen. It's ironic that I put out a video the other day saying to test the spirits. I told you guys about Matthew 24. God said false Christ and false prophets will arise. And boom, the next day the Pope comes to New York. And you got so many brain dead people, literally, ladies and gentlemen, a pack of goats praising this guy like if he's God. They were applauding. Some people were crying like with this idiotic face. They were crying. They were praising the Pope like if he's God. He's not God. He didn't die for me on the cross. I don't worship that scumbag. I worship Jesus Christ. You guys might find what I'm saying offensive. That's your problem. But it's a fact. It's a fact. How can you praise a man and glorify a man? And you could see that he's soaking it up and enjoying it. That was the Jezebel spirit in full manifestation when he was in New York. And everybody was praying and crying because the Pope was there. Are you people deluded? In fact, you are. There's a delusional spirit working behind us. A spirit of slumber. All over all those people that were praising this guy. And the demons that he got, he released onto the people. Do you know that they desecrated the, the burial grounds of 9-11? Not once, twice. When Obama was there. And now, again. You know what's ironic about this? Is that Obama said that the nation was the United States was going to rebuild. Instead of repenting to God. Because that 9-11 obviously was a warning. So they had this tree, the cedar tree. You got to read the book of Isaiah. Um, I think when Israel uh, defied God, okay, remember when Israel defied God? First they had up a, uh, what kind? What was that tree? A, a, guys, I'm trying to remember that the name of the tree. A, begins with. It was before that. A sakelop tree, something like that. What is it called? I think it's the fig tree. What's that called? Uh, begins with an S. Sycamore. sycamore tree, you guys. Thank you. The sycamore tree they had Israel had up, right? That's when Israel defied God. So the, the sycamore tree, remember, was struck down. 
You gotta read the book of Exodus, I believe. You just gotta read it, okay? Somewhere, somewhere in the scriptures, you gotta find it for yourself. So instead of you know, and, and that when that that happened right around the time that Israel was pillaged by an enemy, invaded by an enemy. So Israel won that battle. Israel drove the enemy back with the help of Jesus Christ. Okay. So instead of Israel giving homage and giving glory to Jesus Christ, they basically said they were going to rebuild and they were just defying God right there in his face. And I, I'm hoping I'm explaining this right. So the sycamore tree was struck down and then Israel said that they were going to rebuild and they, they, wrote, they planted a, a cedar tree in place and the cedar tree was uprooted and Israel was taken over by another nation. It was way, way back when. And then, um, I believe it's in the book of Exodus, but you, uh, in the Old Testament, you guys just have to look. And then Israel finally cried out to God and, you know, Israel was saved. But the bottom line is a cedar tree was uprooted. So in the United States, in 9-11, they had a cedar tree, a sycamore tree, I'm sorry. And the sycamore tree was taken from Israel and planted in the soil of 9-11. Um, the soil was unholy. So scientists couldn't explain why the cedar tree, uh, sycamore tree, excuse me, was dying. It just wasn't growing. The tree withered, okay, and lightning struck it and split the tree in two. So the United States, it was like God was saying, like just like he said to Israel, I am the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. I'm the one that made you who you are. And if you don't glorify me as Lord of all and give homage and glory to me, then I'm going to uproot you. So the United States did what Israel did. They defied God. They said, we're going to rebuild on our own. We don't need God. We don't need Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. And that they were going to go ahead and rebuild. So they took a tree from, from uh, a cedar tree from uh, Israel. And they brought it back here. But here's the irony, ladies and gentlemen. The part that they took from the cedar was just the bottom part. It was uh, the trunk. Not the trunk, the roots. It was the roots, right? If you look at that hidden prophecy, okay, God is saying that he is going to uproot the United States. That's what God is saying. Because the United States turned their back on God. It's not just the United States, all the enemies of Israel. Israel is going to be corrected too, but Israel will be delivered. So that's what God is saying. Those are the times we're living in. Now, that was the first time Obama was there. I think it was Obama or, um, yeah, it was Obama. It was Obama. That those two trees, first tree, the cedar, the sycamore was struck down, and they got a tree from Israel, another one, the cedar, and they had the, the roots. Basically saying, you know, basically not even knowing, there was a hidden prophecy that the United States is going to be uprooted. Come years later... The Pope is there, 9-11, again, and instead of giving praise to Jesus Christ, they defy God again by worshiping false idols and false gods and desecrating the burial ground of the righteous that died in 9-11 yet again. A slap in Jesus Christ's face that is not going to go unpunished. So it was a sign of the times, ladies and gentlemen, meaning that these are the times that we're living in. God said that they were going to turn to false idols. Wickedness was going to increase. It is abound. God made these prophecies. God said these things were going to happen. God said false prophets and false Christ would arise, and that's happening now. So I gave you my thoughts on the, on the Pope's visit. I believe it was Bible prophecy. It is the sign of the times that we're living in. I believe that his visit is the footsteps to a one world religion. And I believe that this was a major, one of the major signs we as believers in Christ have to look out for that Jesus Christ is coming. When you see this much deception happen so fast in one shot. I always knew there was a lot of deception, but um, with, his, with his visit, that sparked a lot more deception. 
and a greater falling away as prophesied in the word of God. That Pope think he's going home to the Father, but he's not. He doesn't deserve to be in heaven. And you could get offended or not. That's your problem. If you are a fighter for Jesus Christ, a warrior for the cross, you would, you would go to the Father and you would pray and you would see that what I'm telling you is true. You ask Jesus Christ first, but you would defend the Father and not support this Pope. Because if you stand for this Pope, you stand against the cross. I'm just being for real. With the, the filth that this Pope supports, it is opposite of Jesus Christ. How can you support a Pope that says it's dangerous to have a relationship with Jesus Christ? How can you do that? It's not dangerous. It is the most beautiful, purest form of a relationship you can have with the Father Jesus Christ. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the true living God. Not this scum, the Pope. He is a prince, all right, but the prince of feces. And he is going to get his just rewards. You guys watch. You guys stay in the word of God because these are the last days. I mean, this is the last days. Look around you. Things are changing fast. Don't get caught. Don't, don't have the blindfold over your eyes. Ask Jesus Christ to give you revelation, to give you truth, and to give you spiritual sight. <laughs>